Uh, so yeah, I'm the Director of Public Works. I've been working with Wentzville for uh, 11 years this year. And for those of you who don't know Wentzville, uh, the city of Wentzville provides uh, both water and wastewater services uh, for our residents. Uh, we purchase 90% of our water from PWSD2 and then uh, we uh, process and treat our own water from two uh, deep aquifer wells. Uh, we're about 18 miles away from our primary water supply, uh, so that can make it a little bit challenging for, for us, uh, particularly during peak season. So one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about tonight was um, just want to make you aware uh, our peak months of water demand happen to be June, July, August, and September. Uh, that is primarily because of the uh, lawn irrigation demand. Uh, lawn irrigation has become a very popular uh, treatment, uh, particularly in Wentzville. We're a newer community and a lot of new home builders install automated systems. Uh, and what, what we've found is that uh, during the mornings of like between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. when everyone is trying to get ready for work, having their showers, uh, making breakfast, making their coffee, everybody also seems to be um, for using lawn irrigation, and it does create pressure problems in parts of our community, particularly on the south side of I-70. And the, one of the big reasons for that is because all of our water storage is on the north side of I-70. And so uh, when everybody's using the water all at one time, you can find that you'll have a little, a noticeable drop in pressure in the in the morning, particularly if your own lawn irrigation system is running while you're trying to take a shower. So uh, one of the things I just wanted to recommend to you is um, consider setting your irrigation systems um, at hours other than between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. Those are the two hours that are the very busiest. Um, I know that everybody probably needs, you know, as much as maybe if you're doing lawn irrigation, you need about three hours of irrigation, three days a week. Uh, so um, what I would recommend is that you set up uh, one of your cycles, uh, your hour or hour and 15 minute cycles uh, for before 5 a.m., like started at four o'clock in the morning, started at 3.45, something like that, and then uh, set another one of your cycles after 7 a.m. That would be very helpful for reducing that peak demand during those two peak hours of 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. Uh, a couple other cool things. Uh, we're working really hard installing uh, new smart meters everywhere in the community. We're hoping that uh, in another 12 to 18 months, almost everyone will have an internet-connected uh, smart meter. Um, one of the nice things about that is that you'll be able to um, use Eye on Water, which is an app that you can download to your, to your cell phone, uh, either Android or iPhone, and uh, see what kind of water use you're having, um, all the way down to an hourly amount. So it's really been helpful for me. I do have a smart meter and I've been practicing with it uh, to try to understand for sure how much water I'm putting on my lawn if I happen to be irrigating. The other very, very nice feature is it's got leak uh, detection. It will help if you do happen to have a leak in your home uh, somewhere and you don't know it, if, if you have a toilet that's running. Uh, and you just, some, some of those leaks you just don't know about. Um, and so it's uh, really advanced um, information. So uh, these, these pages uh, are here tonight. You can take one with you. The QR code would uh, give you a spot where you can sign up for Ion Water if you happen to have a smart meter already. About 50% of our community already does. Um, if you don't, um, it shouldn't be too much longer. Um, and then uh, as you sign up, uh, you will need to know your account number and that account number information is available if you get your bill mailed to you or it's also available you can look look it up online um, let's see what else do I want to tell you about smart meters um, how do you know if you have a smart meter well uh, I think what we're going to be doing is putting a uh, a check a check 
for your smart meter on our website where you can type in your name and your address or your account number and we would be able to give you a very good idea if your meter has been replaced already. Uh, so that information will probably be coming out uh, in the next six months. We'll be uh, providing a little bit more information to everyone and rolling it out a little more thoroughly starting next year. Um, so the, we have uh, a couple of mailings a year. I think the Vision uh, or some other uh, outreach sources will have this information in it for you. And then uh, this QR code uh, really is, is to help you sign up. Another thing that you can do, you don't need a QR code for it. You can just go to uh, helpionwater.com. Badger Meter is the uh, manufacturer and the uh, creator of that app. And there's a lot of good information there, that helpionwater.com. Uh, there's a little video, um, shows you how to create an account, all kinds of really good information uh, is available right there online. Uh, if you did have questions and you wanted to call into the office and talk to anybody in the water division, they, they would be able to also you know, give you some additional information on that. So does anybody have any questions for me? I really appreciate all of your patience. Um, you've been great this evening. Yes, sir? Uh, We're not planning on doing that to, to your water supply, <laughs> sir. We're not, we're, we're not doing that. Laugh if you want. <laughs> yes, sir. So what's the anticipated completion for the nightmare at Highway Z and Interstate Drive? Well, the, inter the intersection of Z and Interstate Drive, uh, for those of you that do have to drive through there, it's been under construction where they're, they're adding double turn lanes everywhere to increase the capacity of that intersection. It's going to help a lot uh, because the, the turning traffic off of Interstate Drive onto Z in both directions will be able to get through a whole lot faster. And my understanding is they're going to be done very soon. I think September is when they're is when they're looking for it. I really hope I'm right, Matt. Um, can you not hear that on that one? Yes, okay. So Matt's the Director of Engineering and uh, that is a project a project on a MoDOT road. Highway Z is a MoDOT road, but the city of Wentzville, we've got a lot of talented people in the engineering department, and the city of Wentzville is actually overseeing that project. So they're planning on the way they got it configured right now, are they expanding that bridge going across the creek? So the next project uh, for Highway Z will be a widening project for uh, from that interchange or, or that intersection there south i believe that it's going to go all the way down to perry kate they'll be they'll be widening the bridge as well as adding lanes on highway c yes sir have a meter a water meter for our irrigation system for the neighborhood uh, living homes is, is this applicable currently to that type of meter or just residential at this point i'm pretty sure it would it will be applicable to that type of meter as well Perfect. yes uh, pretty pretty soon or possibly already depending on the size of the meter yes thank you you're welcome all right with that I'm going to turn it over to Charles oh, yes ma'am one more question probably not related to any of this but I'm concerned about the number of homes that are being built in the city and the this with which trees get cut down but more importantly the road conditions and the lack of I should say the lack of parks, you have a number of parks, but um, from my experience, we, um, does the city charge, if you will, for lack of better terms, a park development fee to the builders, and do you charge them with the responsibility of maintaining roads or, or providing funds for future maintenance of roads as a result of the increased number of Okay. So uh, I'll try to give you a short answer. There's several funding sources in uh, in the city of Wentzville. There's the general fund, which is budgeted or funded primarily from property tax. Uh, the property tax would be the tax that you pay at the end of the year on your home. There's a very small percentage of that 
that goes to the city of Wentzville. The majority of it goes to the school district and the fire district, but there is some that goes to Wentzville. When it comes to transportation, there's a sales tax fund for that, that uh, and all that revenue um, goes into the transportation fund, and that comes from everybody who lives in, in the city of Wentzville when they make purchases. So, um, so I'm talking about the developers themselves. Are they assessed a fee or a park development fee for one, which goes basically into the park department's future construction of parks and or a fee for future repairs to roads as a result of the increased number of homes being constructed? There, to my knowledge, there is not a park impact fee uh, charged to developers. There, they're really the the methods vary from one municipality to another municipality. What we have available in Wentzville for park funds is again, it's a sales tax uh, that was actually um, passed by voters. Um, I think at least 10, maybe 12 to 15 years ago. And it was, the, the option for a municipality is to do like a quarter cent sales tax for stormwater and a quarter cent sales tax for parks. It didn't pass that way in Wentzville. They tried to get it to pass that way, the voters wouldn't pass it. So an entire half percent went to parks and, and is funding the parks program. And so one of the things that you might wonder as you heard a lot about have, uh, each HOA needing to maintain their own stormwater basin. Part of that is because the voters did not pass a quarter cent sales tax for stormwater in Wentzville, so there's not funding available for that. That's why the individual HOAs are, are maintaining their own basins. I don't know if that helps. I, I know that's a really short uh, description of funding. It's a very specific question because the city that I worked in and for for way too many years, we established a park development fee is for future parks for the new homes that are being constructed. So the developer doesn't have to build a park now, but he has to provide funds to the city for the development of future parks as a result of the increased number of people that he is bringing to the city through his construction of new homes. Unders understood. Um, we don't have that feature available, to my knowledge, here in Wentzville. They do, uh, when a lot of times, depending on how they bring the development forward, they'll put features in, sometimes a pocket park, into an ind individual subdivision, but there isn't a mechanism for them to directly pay into the parks fund, unless someone else here can correct me. I believe that's a correct statement. Who okay. do you need to speak to to recommend that? Well, um, Certainly you could uh, share that if you would like um, with, with your elected officials, uh, with whatever ward that you're in, you could send them an email. And, and, and if I live in the county unincorporated, do I have any say so whatsoever? Well, I would say everybody has say so. Um, well, I, when I asked the but question, you don't have a, but you don't have a sir, vote I, for it. I was basically you know. told, go talk to the county. So that's why I'm saying, if I come to a meeting and they say, where do you live? They're going to look at my address and say, you live in unincorporated county, what are you doing here? You have no say so. Or they're going to say, hey, that's a great idea. We'll take it in consideration, but, you know. Yeah. I think, you know, I think we do a, a pretty good job with our parks in Wentzville, and I think St. Charles County also does a really good job with parks. We've got, we we've got a pretty you do, decent But I work in some with, batch. with builders coming to the city and basically making a huge profit, and the city gets stuck with the cost of maintaining the roads, and building new parks for all of these people. And that cost should be a I, part of the builders. I guess what I would say, ma'am, is that when a developer comes in, they are required to complete a lot of infrastructure, and they do it in compliance with uh, engineering design criteria for pavement, for the water lines, for the wastewater lines, for stormwater system. And that all gets dedicated over to the city, and the city typically is not paying for that. The developer is. Right but you have to maintain those roads. Yes. And that takes a lot of general fund. It does, it does. It's not, uh, it's not cheap. Um, I think uh, we all do a really good job of doing the best we can. Uh, we've made terrific advancements in technology, I would say, uh, in terms of you know maintaining our traffic signals. As just one example here in St. Charles County, all of the traffic signals are interconnected and we speak to one another and it helps traffic get through 
not just Wentzville, but a lot of the communities uh, and saves gas. Uh, so a lot of good stuff. Uh, again, thank you. Thank you all for, for coming. We really appreciate it. Uh,